Yo, what's poppin', YouTube? It's your boy Vaughn coming back at you with another one. Just when you thought it wasn't gonna be another one. So, today's a special day. My Browns take the first step into being a Super Bowl champions this year. So, in about 90 minutes, we kick off. We got to kick some butt. So, I'm excited today. But I'm also excited when I hopped online, I saw the story of BG. I've been a BG fan for a long time. Quick story, my older brother, he was real deep into the, the cash money and the no limit movement back in the 90s. So remember they used to drop CDs every week? So I became a big fan because my big brother was a fan. So I'm a big fan of BG. Um, so, I, you know, I want to watch this. So I'm about to watch it now with y'all live. And I'm going to react to it. But first, bro, like, my man, what a feeling. feeling? All my niggas on the grind trying to see a million. Yeah. Make a better way for our children. All my real niggas, put your hands to the ceiling. Yeah. It feels good to be a real nigga. Yeah. It feels good to be a real nigga. Yeah. It feels good to be a real nigga. Hey, shout out to Twice for that intro. It feels good to be a real nigga. But check this out. We're about to get into it. The story of BG, the original hot boy. I know a little bit of his story, but I ain't the most well-versed person as far as knowing BG's history. So I'm very interested in watching this. So here we go. Without further ado. BG kicked off his career working with Birdman and Lil Wayne and could have been a superstar. He fumbled the bag, ended up getting hit with a 14-year sentence. But now he's back and ready to take over the game. From chilling with two of the most brutal killers in Louisiana to beating a heroin addiction and surviving a decade in prison, today we're breaking down the entire crazy story. BG was born and raised in the 13th Ward of New Orleans. New Orleans is crime ever. Real quick, shout out to BG. You know, they, they, they're trying to put smut on the man's name, but I read, I read some of the paperwork and... I'm not going to say he snitched. So you got a fall guy. That's what the fall guy's for. So shout out to BG. But this and Wayne is crazy. Wayne is one of my top five favorite rappers of all time. Like, do I got to go down the list? Do I need to go there? BG, why would you? This, y'all been friends since y'all was like 10 years old. But I don't know. You, you got your reasons. But let me get back into it. But this and Wayne is crazy. Would Jay Mang say, do I gotta go there? Beware. But the spot BG comes from is even crazier than most hoods. His parents wanted to keep him out of the streets. And for a while, he had a pretty normal childhood. But when he was just 12 years old, BG's entire life changed. In 1992, BG spent the weekend at his dad's place and his mom came to pick him up. It was just a normal day for him. But when they got to his mom's place, BG found out some devastating news. Just a couple minutes after his mom picked him up, BG's dad was shot and killed in a robbery that went left. See, it's always that one pivotal moment in somebody's life where, you know, the trajectory looked good and then, bam, that happens. You know what I mean? It's like, it's always that one pivotal moment. Like, I could, I can point to my pivotal moment where I almost went completely astray. But it's always that one moment where, you know, things, are, things look right and then, bam, you know, the world come crashing down on you. And you, and you go on a different path. But, you know, his was his father getting murdered. An interview, BG said that some dudes kicked in his dad's door and tried to rob him, but his dad fought back. The dudes put hands on him at first, and then they upped their straps and killed him. Losing his dad like that sent BG down a crazy path. And not before long, he put both feet in the trenches and started his own hustle. BG was selling crack and heroin before he was even a teenager. And after a couple years in the streets, he started using drugs too. A lot of kids who fall into the street life smoke weed and drink, but BG took it a step further and was addicted to heroin at just 14 years old. Sheesh. Sheesh. 14? Heroin? I mean, now that don't seem like it's off the wall, but when was this, 94? Because they say that happened in 92, he was 12. 94? I mean, but I will say this. A lot of my OGs, they did drugs regularly. And, like, they was functioning drug addicts. And, I mean, I guess it ain't much different now because you got so many people popping these pills and this fentanyl nonsense. You know, just give me my marijuana and I'm happy. You know, give me my marijuana, give me my, give me my Anejo, Don Julio, or my Don Julio Respo. 
And I'm straight, you know. All I need is my little marijuana and my drink. I don't need all that other stuff. But 14, addicted to heroin, that's crazy. While he was trapping and trying to make money, BG was also working on his rapping skills. He had been into music since a little kid. And even back then, the dudes in his neighborhood knew he had real talent. One day, BG was at a local barber getting a cut, and he spent a few bars for the dudes in the shop. And that's the day that changed his life. His barber also cut Birdman and his brother Slim's hair back. Do y'all remember back in the 90s? I don't know if y'all remember. I don't want to age myself or whatever, but do y'all remember back in the 90s when they used to drop albums every week? Every week, No Limit or Cash Money was dropping the album. BG used to spit that Kridnack. No, BG had bars. I don't know about everybody else, but BG, Master P used to drop, Sip the Shocker used to drop, you know, all of them, Wayne, all of them, they used to drop every week. But BG always just kind of like it just kind of stuck to me. You know what I mean? I'm recording. Somebody texting me right now. And he was so impressed with BG's bars that he went to three of them up. The barber called it Birdman. And when he came into the shop, he asked BG to spit something for him. BG dropped a little freestyle. And Birdman knew he had potential from the jump. The two of them hopped in Birdman's whip and went to BG's house. And Birdman convinced BG's mom to let BG come stay with him. Birdman and Slim had just started cash money records and were trying to get the label off the ground. BG was only 14 when he met them, but Birdman and Slim already had a plan. Back then, BG was going by the name Lil Doogie. And it hey, shout out to Birdman too, man. I don't care what you think about him. His business mind and his forward thinkingness is amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, his business mind was, okay, his ear for talent was like, okay, this guy can rap, this guy can rap. Now, let me help mold these people to be businessmen and rappers. Like, look at Wayne right there. He never thought that this guy right here would turn into, you know, one of the greatest rappers to ever walk this earth. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to Bird, man. Linked him up with another young rapper in the crew called Baby D, who eventually changed his name to Lil Wayne. Baby D. He was only 12 at the time. So, Birdman made a duo with BG and him called the Baby Gangsters. The BGs. The BGs. In 95, they dropped their first project together called True Story. But it was really more like a solo BG record. Wayne was only on a few tracks, and BG carried the whole thing. Having your own album at 14 is already crazy. But what made the situation even more wild is how people... Hey, they kids. Look at them, man. Look at them. But listen, the reason why we still talk about BG right now is because look at his work ethic. His work ethic. They said, oh, Wayne was only on a couple, blah, blah, blah. But BG was all over that joint. That's work ethic. That's why he is still around today. After serving that 14 years, he come back, drop, you know, drop that song with Gucci Mane and all. It's work ethic, man. That, that'll that carry you sometimes more than talent. BG started putting pressure on the ops immediately. Back then, Cash Money was beefing with the rapper and Mystical. And BG started sending shots at him on the track True Story and Raps. Let's move across that water, strap with that AK. They got some wannabe grips. Wanna bang? Go to LA. Now you can claim the east, north, west, or south. Mystical fool, you can pump this dick right in your mouth. Pause. And mystical, use a hoe. It's time I let you know. Y'all ain't ready. You can pump this. Pump it in your. Hey, bro. Pause. Uncle Five got a boot camp full of hoes. I'm gat toting, ready to leave your heart open. Bullets floating, hot nine chamber smoking. Mystical really blew up when he was signing No Limit. But back then, he read Big Boy Records, and BG took shots at the whole crew with the line. I'm about to hiccup some bullets on my fucking steel. Peel, make niggas kneel. Bow down. From this clown, it's gonna put you six in the ground. It's time a nigga put Big Boy where the fuck they belong. Rolling with Tech Nine, best believe it's on. Hey, this dude trying to rap this to a cadence is crazy. Like, <laughs> make you peel, feel you kneel, bow down, trying to get. Bro, just read it. <laughs> you try to read it to a cadence. But listen, man, but anyway, this kid, he's 14 years old, talking like that. And probably was really living like that. I like it. She was barely even a teenager at that point. But his street rhymes sound like a dude who had been spinning for decades. On the track, get on my feet. He talks about hustling in the trenches and raps. Like pop, I'm in so much pain. I'm broke, I'm singing in the rain. 14, struggling, pocket full of crack cocaine. Trying to come up off a bill. You know I got them hustling skills. And down for the jack move. 
Nigga like me is savage. Don't let me catch you slipping. I'll kill you, Wiz. I got to have it. When I bust my 17, you know I'm gonna get you. Split you when you holler. I know I hit you. Wayne eventually became one of the greatest of all time. But back then, BG was the hottest rapper on Cash Money. He was on his way up for sure. But he was still neck deep in the trenches and got booked for possession of a gun, crack cocaine, and weed. Right after True Story came out, BG got off easy with just a probation, but then he got locked up for two months after he violated it. Serving two months ain't bad, but when BG came home, he had more tragic news waiting for him. While he was on the inside, his best friend had been shot and killed in the street. BG was still using heroin, aka getting loaded, and moving weight on the side. And he got hit with a three-year sentence after the cops pulled him over and found 30 volumes and two ounces of weed. He caught another break when the sentence was reduced to eight months, and that's when he decided to really go hard in the booth. Hey, bro, you got a few chances, man. You got to take it. I say this on another video. You got to take advantage of your opportunities. Like you came home. Yeah, your homie got killed. You getting high as you can possibly get. Probably not rapping like you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to take advantage of your opportunity. Don't wait till a catastrophe happens to try to take advantage of your opportunity. Man, take advantage, take advantage of that shit now. You know what I'm saying? While it's in front of you. That's free game for whoever whoever's watching. And you don't know if the opportunity is going to come back around. Take advantage of it. For him, luckily, it came back around. He caught a break. Let's say he got an eight-month sentence where he was supposed to serve three years or something like that. You know, the opportunity came back around, but that don't always happen for everybody. You know, take advantage of that. Superman originally wanted BG and Wayne to be in the same group, but in 96, he realized that both of them could pop off with their own records. And that's when they officially became Lil Wayne and BG instead of Baby D and Lil Doogie. BG dropped his debut album, Chopper City, that same year. A lot of fans have forgotten about the record, but back then, it was one of the most respected albums in the South and sold over 100k units in the first week with basically no marketing. BG was blowing up and is the main reason Cash Money became one of the biggest... No, nah, we heard about that all the way in the Midwest. We knew about that. It was Chopper City, and then it was uh, It's All On You, Volume 1, and then It's All On You, Volume 2. Like, those was the ones that, and then uh, there was another one, Choppers in the Ghetto or something like that. I think it was something like that. But we knew about that all the way in the Midwest, you know. So, uh, shout out to them, whatever they did, but their music wasn't just in the South. about it on the track i'll be thinking and said i'll be loaded thinking of range rovers maybe i could get a range rover if i stay my ass sober i'll be loaded thinking of condos and maybe i could get a condo if i keep my nose closed and i'm welcome to the section he raps <laughs> uptown clown getting so dirty i know i'll be fucking up but if i stop fucking up things won't be fucked up like bro come on dog like what's up like get yourself together dog like I guess the 90s was wild, though. I guess. I don't know. Respect my fucking mind. Gotta get my nose dirty. Lil Wayne had been quiet in the industry for a couple of years. Because back in 94, he barely survived a suicide attempt when he shot himself in the chest. His mom didn't like him rocking with Birdman and didn't want him in the rap game. So Wayne grabbed her gun and used it on himself. Back then, he claimed it was an accident. But later, he aired the full story out on the track, Let It All Work Out, and raps. I found my mama's pistol where she always hide it. I cried, put it to my head, and thought about it. Nobody was home to stop me, so I called my auntie, hung up, and put the gun up to my heart and pondered. Too much was on my conscience to be smart about it. Too torn apart about it. I aimed where my heart was pounded. I shot it, and I woke up with blood all around me. Luckily, Wayne survived and made a full recovery. And by 97, he was ready to come back in and take over the game. Birdman had just signed Juvenile, Turk, and his nephew Bulletproof. So... I'm speechless. Like I, I'm gonna keep it real. I didn't. I thought it was always thought it was an accident. Like he was playing with. The, I always heard he was playing with the gun and and the gun went off or whatever. I didn't know that story. So that's you know that's all new to me. If that's true, you know I'm I'm not the fact checker. I'm just absorbing the information they putting out there to me. But that's new info to me. Everything went to the next level for cash money. Their album, Get It How You Live, racked up over 300k sales. And thanks to BG and the Hot Boy's success, Birdman was able to get a massive deal with Universal Records that was worth 30 mil. 
then in 99, BG dropped his classic record. Chopper City Chopper in the City. ghetto, that's what I was talking about. BG was already popping in the South, but the deal with Universal introduced him to a whole new audience, and the album was a hit everywhere. It wasn't just a hot record, though. BG featured the Hot Boys on the track Bling Bling and took over the entire culture. Bling Bling popped off and became his most successful single, but the term started getting used by everyone to describe their jewelry, cars, and any other. See, we... See, right now they're talking about, oh, once once that came out, he became like, no, 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 no. We knew about him already, like I said, in the Midwest. You know, we was already hip because it wasn't nothing to be riding down the street and you stop at like Chili's or something on Union and somebody's playing the BG album or somebody's playing the Master P album or somebody's playing Silk the Shot. Like, it wasn't like, I don't know, but the Midwest is notorious for, you know, absorbing a little bit of everybody's, you know, sauce and making their own sauce because that's what we do. Like we 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 absorb stuff and then we make our own out of it. We turn we turn grapes to wine, like you know what I'm saying. So. Trip they had. BG was getting bigger and bigger, but behind the scenes, his life was We knew about BG before Bling Bling. For years, he couldn't keep the habit, and he was getting too loaded to even show up for concerts and video shoots. His solo career was popping off, and the Hot Boys were going even crazier. They dropped their second album, Guerrilla Warfare, in 99, and it hit number one on the Billboard rap charts. The Hot Boys were becoming one of the hottest rap crews in the world, but nobody knew how much drama was going on behind the scenes. BG dropped his last album, Cash Money, in 2000. He had been with Birdman since the beginning, but he ended up leaving the label and said that they were playing with his money. He also sent shots at Birdman and Wayne on tracks like Reality Check Part 1, where he raps. Wayne, you know you was mine, nigga. Way before baby, you rapping. Nigga, B. Jizzle was your daddy. You know I'll do you something nasty. Leave your motherfucking brains on the dashboard of that G-Wagon. It's about to get ugly. You push me to this point, nigga. Now you about to get burnt, nigga. And Jeez. you don't let baby put cables on you. You a fish in shark infested water. I feel sorry for your daughter. She got a scary coward fake duck ass nigga for a father. Who gonna get himself slaughtered? Jesus. Wayne never clapped back though. Jesus. The track I miss my dogs. He showed love to BG and raps. That hot boy shit still in me, nigga. Word the giggity, nigga. And I ain't got time to speak the history. I miss you, and I know you missing me, Jizzle. BG started his own label called Chopper City Records and tried to keep the momentum up, but he never hit the same heights on his own. He dropped a few yeah, albums dog, in the you knew that was going. And in 2009, news broke that the Hot Boys were planning a reunion. By that point, Lil Wayne was one of the biggest rappers of all time, and linking back up with him would have been a huge win for BG. Unfortunately, the reunion project fell through, though, and Wayne just brought BG out during one of their shows instead. BG... Hey, that reunion would have been epic. Because they, bro, from like 96 to like 99, 2000, the Hot Boys was, Hot Boys was them dudes, man. So that, that reunion would have been epic, man. I hate that that ain't really happened. Didn't become a superstar like Wayne, but he was definitely making enough money in the rap games to live an easy life. Unfortunately, he was still on heroin, though. And it was wrecking everything. All the way back in 96, he rapped about kicking the habit on the track doing bad and said, I'm on that dope. It ain't no secret, but that shit ain't shot. I'm gonna stay high, stay shy, and get mine. I can't do it, so I gotta try and kick the habit. Or that million I want, I might not ever have it. BG said the dope definitely had an effect on his career and slowed him down. He said that it all started back in the day after one of his homies got killed in the street. The dude who died used to snore heroin. So BG and some other homies decided to snort a bag to honor it. BG was so from the jump, and it took him decades to finally stop using it. He was kicking the dope, grinding his solo career, and linking back up with Lil Wayne. Everything looked like he was heading in the right direction, but then BG caught a charge and got him locked up for over a decade. On November 3rd, 2009, BG and his homies were riding around New Orleans when the cops pulled him over and found three guns in the whip. Two of the straps were stolen, and it turned out the Tahoe they were riding it was stolen too. BG pleaded not guilty on the weapons charge, and one of his homies said the guns were all his. But then the case took another turn. The prosecutors found out that BG convinced the dude to take the fall, so they hit him with another charge for obstruction of justice. They also brought up the fact that BG... See, this is, where we, this, this is what I'm talking about. It's a fall guy. From what I read, and from a little bit of, you know, I don't want to spread false information, but from what I understand, you know, this was going on, and they was like, hey, bro, you got to take this charge. And he agreed to it or whatever, and then the dude popped up like, oh, I ain't agreed to that, but you took the charge. Like, 
like I said, I don't want to spread misinformation. So that's what, you know, from watching other bloggers and stuff like that, that's what I've gathered. And when I looked at the little bit of paperwork on Reddit, that's kind of what I, my understanding of it was. But... He was allegedly tied with Telly Hankton and Walter Porter. And Hankton is one of the most notorious drug lords in Louisiana. And Porter was a notorious hitman who went down for killing at least three people. At that point, there wasn't much he could do about it. So he ended up pleading guilty to everything and got hit with the 14-year sentence. Going to prison is always dangerous, but it's even crazier if you're behind bars and everyone knows who you are. Most famous dudes will go inside, try to get into protective custody and stay safe. But BG just went straight to the yard with everyone else. His cellmate was a dude As he should. Phrase, and in an interview, Freeze said BG earned everyone's respect from the jump. BG could have just kept his head down and stayed to himself. But Freeze said he held it down in there. Yeah, well, uh, listen, you you see his upbringing. You knew he, you knew he was going to hit the line. He's going to hit them lines, man. He's going to hit that yard. You knew that. Like, why, why would he? He not about to PC up. He from New Orleans. He he from really from New Orleans. He's really living that life. He about to hit the yard. We knew that. Like he was just another dude from the streets and not a famous rapper. BG would press no tools for their paperwork as soon as they hit the yard to make sure they weren't snitches and allegedly got active a couple times behind bars. But Free said he also had a big heart and would help people out. By the time BG got locked up, he had finally kicked the heroin addiction. But when he saw dudes on the inside going through withdrawals, he was trying to help them out because he knew what it was like to be in their shoes. BG had a lot of time to work on himself behind bars, and Free said he was always reading books in there. BG even paid for Christmas gifts for Freeze's family and put money on his books so he could buy stuff from the prison commissary. A lot of the inmates in prison were fans of BG too, and he always showed love and would stay up all night responding to fan mail from people on the outside too. Birdman and BG had some drama back in the day, but luckily they were able to squash it, and Birdman ended up visiting him in prison and started trying to get him out early. And back in 2022, rumors were flying that BG had been released from prison. When the story broke, Gucci Mane hopped on Twitter to welcome him home and said he wanted to sign BG for a mil. But then news came out that it was all fake. Fans were happy with the news. <laughs> but in September 2023, BG caught a major break. It's not clear how it happened, but he was actually released after serving 11 years in prison. And Birdman was right there to greet him when he came out. Gucci said he wanted BG on his label, but Birdman made it clear that BG is coming back to cash money and they got big plans together. It made BG it clear. 11 years waiting for his chance to take over the game. And he didn't waste any time before hitting the studio again. BG was one of the most important and influential rappers in New Orleans back in the day. And now that he's sober, out of the streets, and hungry to win, he's ready to come back and be bigger than ever before. I ain't gonna lie, man. I want to see him win, dog. I want to see him win. I want to see him win. He gonna win. I'm telling you that. Imagine if you check. But listen, man. That was the story of BG. Um, yeah, man. That You know, it, it gave me a little bit of information I ain't know. But listen, man, take advantage of every opportunity that you get, man. Don't be, don't, don't, don't mess it off doing some, you know, some random nonsense like drugs. Um, smoke your weed, drink your liquor, control yourself, have a good time, go home, make it, you know, make it home safe. But yeah, man, you know, that was the story of BG. Um, gave me a little bit of information I didn't know. A lot of it I did know, you know, I thought it would be more in depth, but it is what it is. It don't matter because the Browns about to do their thing, and I'm excited. So next time y'all see me, I'm going to probably do some type of celebration because we're going to be moving on to the next round of the playoffs. You know how we get out. So um, listen, like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, if you got some, you know, some music or something that you want me to review, react to, hit me up. You know, my Instagram will be right here at underscore Ayovan underscore. I'm going to link it right here. And uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Hit the like button, comment, subscribe here on YouTube. And tell a friend to tell a friend. It don't cost nothing to hit the subscribe button. Oh. Subscribe button. <laughs> hey, but listen, man. Y'all take care, man. Be blessed. Vaughn got the word. I'm out. Your boyfriend in the past said looking upset. Better Google me, nigga. Learn about my rap. Really from my jurisdiction. Yeah, I'm really from the set. Now she all in my DM. I got her out late. Breaking laws in the PM. When you see him, you better know I keep a gun. No SP challenge shit, nigga. Never run.